Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video we'll talk about the products of the Legend Nano S and X. So the first question we might ask ourselves is, um, or at least something you hear a lot, is if the Ledger Nano S is open source. And the firmware itself is not open source, that is correct. Uh, due to NDAs, so non-disclosure agreements with the manufacturers regarding the firmware. But um, Ledger is published, so it's in part. So, but the rest, so not all except the firmware is open source. So you can also show it here. So you can see here. So they uh, they have it on GitHub. So in the Ledger HQ, um, they have all their repositories there, and they can also check out, for example, the Ledger Live desktop um, source code. So you can see it here, for example, for the Ledger Live app you're using, um, and also they have it for all the apps. So I'm gonna quickly. Um, go to the app XRP. So this is, for example, the source code for the XRP app, which is uh, which you install on your Ledger on S device. And I've also gone through that one here. You can also see I've gone through the comments. So what, what was very interesting is seeing um, where the uh, signed transaction is being sent to, and we can see here that it's being sent to WebSocket of the XRPL cluster. So this is uh, this is a cluster not run by Ripple. It's being run by the Xable Ledger Foundation, and uh, that's where if you, for example, send a transaction using your Ledger uh, in the Ledger Live app, this is where the transaction gets uh, sent to, and uh, it's also very interesting. And right, so th this is like the first interesting part for, for generally speaking, for the Ledger Nano S or Ledger Nano. A at, uh, in the total context. So I myself have two uh, Nano S. Um, I was thinking about getting it resolved, but the dif the difference why I bought the Ledger Nano S is obviously the price, but also in regards to security. So the Ledger Nano S is secure, but also is the tre Trezor. Um, but I just like the, the design more and the handling more. Uh, anything else there to mention? So, um, like I said, so how does the ledger work actually? So, um, they, you c so any website can interact with the ledger. It doesn't matter. So, for example, as you know, if you go to the XP Toolkit website, you can log in using the ledger. You don't even need the Ledger Nano Ledger Live app. But the thing is that the, then uh, the a website, after entering the PIN, can submit sign requests, then a transaction is being sent to the ledger itself, then on the ledger you can do a sign, so you're signing with your private key, being derived from your mnemonic, you sign a transaction and you push the signed transaction, goes out of the device again and it's being sent to the service, for example to the website if you're using XRP Toolkit then the signed transaction is being pushed to the uh, website again. A website then can submit it to a service, so you can see it here. If a would connect the ledger, I could connect it here. So I'm, ju I'm just gonna do that as well now. So you can just uh, connect it here. Then it will have to enter the pin code. So this is pretty simple, s that far here. And then you can see the device here. So it's being shown, then you can s connect here. And uh, then it would have to open the XOP app as well. So, and then it's, so then it would, uh, then it would retrieve all the information here. Right, and yeah, that's how all of the works, generally speaking. And right, that's how how the sign works. That now we also know that the most part of the XP ledger, so uh, my bad, the XP ledger, that most parts of the ledger na Nano S and X are open source, not the firmware. And we also have seen the, for example, the source code for. Uh, so we quickly looked over the source code for the Ledger Live app and also for the XRP app. So this is the app uh, written in C, uh, which runs on the uh, device itself. So which is which you can install from by the Ledger device manager, and then this app this code gets executed here. So we can look over all of it if you want to. There are just gen some general libraries in C and so on. Right, so that's it for this video. So I hope I was able to make things a little bit more clear in regards if uh, Ledger is open source or not. And also there's another criticism, which is not that valid in my opinion. People say, yeah, the, the, uh, the email database got hacked of Ledger and that's why the Ledger devices are insecure. 
that argument is totally invalid um, because the one thing has nothing to do with the other. So in the one case, they're handing out these, these ledger devices, and as we know, the ledger itself just stores your 24 words, the mnemonic, or 12 words, um, whatever. And from these words, th then you get all the different apps. For example, the XRP app. And the XRP app knows how to derive an account from the mnemonic. And then from the derived account, for example, account 0, account 1, you can derive an, un uh, an unlimited amount of uh, accounts. Then you can get take the private key, and with the private key you can sign the transaction. And that's how all of it works. And in regards to and in regards to Ledger's database, it was just a database of people who, for example, uh, bought um, a device on their website. And then you entered the. But th this is a centralized database which they have. Okay, so they have the website where you buy you, uh, the Ledger. So they have just info that whatever the person who registered on the website. So if you go there, you can go to the shopping cart. And here you can see that if you buy something, you, they want you to enter the, the whatever your email address and stuff like that. And obviously, it's not nice that, like I said, that the database got hacked. Uh, so I didn't look that close into it, but it's just information, like I said, just to contain your email address. So, like I said, they have the centralized, had the centralized database for all of the information, account information, plus their the email address. So this is the part they lost. So hackers were able to gain access to. And then hackers were able to send you, like I said, uh, some emails and act like, yeah, your ledger's been compromised, please give us your mnemonic, something like that. But that doesn't mean that the device itself is insecure, you know? So obviously you can understand the distrust when it happens, so, uh, but saying that just because their database got hacked that the device is insecure is, in my opinion, not a valid criticism there. So obviously it doesn't look good if a security firm has a security breach, I can agree with that. Um, but it doesn't mean that the device, like I said, it, it, so the, the, the design is completely different here. Because the only problem would be if there would be... So in order to attack the ledger device itself, somebody must gain physical access or whatever. There must be some physical modifications uh, because the, the, the thing is that your mnemonic never leaves the device. That's what, what was being built upon. That never gets exposed. It's just being used internally for the signing and only the signed transaction leaves the device. That's how it works, generally speaking. Alright, um, yeah, that's it for this video, so thanks for watching and see you in the next one.